<laughs> and this lady's like, okay, so we have an overdraft, we have a revolving loan, we have a credit card, we have a personal loan. Which one? Funny enough, I, I do mention on that um, sermon how I got into debt. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, it was the first year of working. Okay. And at the time I was dating this girl. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so dating, I just got permanent. I remember that lady was like, okay, what, what credit line do you want? Okay. I'm like, credit line? What's that? <laughs> I'm like, no, I think you want money. Yeah. How yeah. much? How much? I'm like, how much? She's like, yeah, which one? I was like, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Umam Saga could actually borrow 1.5 million from the bank. Mm. So like, okay. Then from that 1.5, we bought three properties cash. And then, then we bought those properties in a company. So all of a sudden, Mam Sarah had a company, right? But one of the uh, children was about to get married, community of properties, like, hey, I don't trust these things, eh? <laughs> <laughs> if I die now, this, this girl, all of a sudden, I was like, no, but put it in a trust. Welcome to another edition of Mindset Profits. Again, we're back to our foundations, those topics that we love. And today I am joined by an author, Mr. Gavin Mkabela, who is the author of Gav's Financial Sermons. And it says, ain't nothing but the financial truth. I have read the book and I highly recommend that you pick it up for yourself. So put a link in the description so you can get it. There is a link that we can use. Yes. <laughs> I'm making a commitment before. Yeah. I, I, I'm making a commitment before I've confirmed. <laughs> but yeah, it's one of those things. Books that you love to support because he covers quite a number of topics that we go through like black text, debt. There's a number of things that we'll talk about. And I know it's going to be valuable for someone, but before I even go far, Mr. Kev, welcome yes, to the podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. <laughs> really appreciate it, man. Yes, you are one of those again. It's overdue because hey, we hang together too much at church and we should have made this happen a long time ago. <laughs> ah, we understand. Yes, <laughs> God's timing, <laughs> yeah, all the time. All the all time. Right. Yeah. For someone who doesn't know you. Yeah. How do you give your profile? Profile, all right. Who is Gav? So Gavin is, um, um, yeah, so I mean, I'm a father, first of all. I think that's a very important title. Okay. Um, and I am, um, I'm the managing director, founder of Gav Show International, mm -hmm. fully registered real estate agency uh, with a special focus on property investment. Um, so yeah, so the idea is really to just teach people how to invest in property or scale current property portfolios and yeah, give you the one-stop shop pretty much where we have everything selling, we buy, um, we have accountants, conveyances, so everybody under mm. one roof. And yeah, I'm an author, I'm a blogger, I'm a publisher, I'm about to pub help a client publish an, a book uh, next month. So, yeah, I'm an investor, <laughs> <laughs> couple of heads in Yana, but yeah, you know. Couple yeah. of heads in Yana. <laughs> yes. I think uh, I've seen quite a lot of videos that you share, great mm. content that you share and teachings. Thank you. you teach some really complex stuff, mm. company structures and trusts. Yes, yes, yes. You need to come. So one of those yeah. things that I do is if I find some good content, yeah. I'll call you and say, hey, let's have a podcast yeah. because I want Wonderful. to learn. I want to learn how to set up a trust. It's yes. not something that I've gone into. So it's yeah. a confession. Ne? No problem. No problem. But it's good that you're here. Yeah. <laughs> of then course. Then we, we, we of course. put some fire on the podcast. Yeah. Why the name? financial sermons because it takes me to the bible mm. Mm. Yeah. so look i think you know i only say a lot of the things that happen to me um they they're spiritual and mm. i really believe that the book is spiritual even how it came about okay it was very spiritual you know and um and again it's it's one of those things that you know when we talk about finances uh, I believe there's a gospel in finance. You know, there's ways <laughs> things need to go. You know, there's order. Um, and then I think a lot of the times when you, you you check, 
whenever I, I, I coach people, there's always steps that people have missed. Uh, mm. It's somewhere, somewhere, you know, and all of it has to do with principles. Mm. And you go back to the Bible. It's not necessarily a, a, a spiritual book, mm. but it, it, it goes to a lot of principles that I've picked up when one reads the Bible and you say, but, you know, budgeting, there's a, there's, there's an element to it mm. when you take it from the Bible side of things. So, mm. yeah, the name also just came from, from that. I mean, what, even the, the cover itself. Okay. It came as like so, from a dream. This is the cover he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It came, <laughs> it came from a dream. It was a dream, the name, everything. The colors. You dreamt about the book. Yeah, the cover. Okay. Yeah. You're one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, all right. So yeah. when you say you coach people and you see some of the steps that they've missed, do you have a couple of examples? Some of the steps that you've seen, obvious ones that can help someone out there? Yeah. So so one of the things that I talk about lately is mental health. Okay. Right. So actually within the agency itself, there's three pillars. So there is the real estate side, there's a the financial planning, and there's mental health. And a lot of the times people ask me, but Gavin, real estate, mental health, it doesn't mix, <laughs> right? But um, I, and a lot of the stuff that I do business-wise as well come from personal experiences. Mm. So I battled for the longest of time with low self-esteem. But no, not your, your typical low self-esteem, <laughs> you know, yeah. where, I mean, going back to standard two, well, that's how old I am, right? <laughs> and being You're cheese. speaking of standard <laughs> And people are speaking about grades, you know. Um, and I was teased in standard two. And, uh, and the particular incident, the, the teacher mm. laughed as well. And something happens to me. And somehow I, yeah, the, my world changed. And I, I really battled with low self-esteem. I was thin, I was tall, and now I had this limiting self-belief. And now Utlala no Koko. Koko has limiting money beliefs as well. So then I realized that going forward, if you lack confidence, that's the first start. It becomes difficult to manage and grow money. Mm. A lot of the people that are stagnant financially, when you trace back from a, you know, from a confidence perspective, it's lucky. Because yeah. remember, when you invest, you, it's, it's a risk element it's a to risk. it. Yeah, mm. you're jumping in and you don't know whether this thing is going to work or not. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are not confident to say, look, even if it doesn't work out, I'm fine, then you, you, the chances are no, you're not going to invest. Yeah. Yeah. So and generally, you, confident people are not afraid to back their ideas. Of course. Mm. Of course. Yes. When you're lacking confidence, you're afraid to back yourself. Yeah. That you can pull it off. Yeah. So now, how do you grow something? How do you grow personally? You know, to mm. even go out there. You know, it's like Ukshel. You know, you need confidence, <laughs> share, right? So if you don't, you're not confident. Uh, a lot of the times, so tola lo yung am tant. You know, the hot so one is like you only You're not away. confident. <laughs> you're not getting married anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> you know, yeah. or you'd have to be like back share. Back share, even that you might even reject them because you do, you don't you know you don't show up about yourself, basically. <laughs> so all of that, it, it it has to do with finances as well. Do you remember what they said when they were teasing you? Wondi want. Oh, tall slim. Wondi. You know when somebody say wondi and stretch it out. Mm. The wondi. Wondi. Yeah, yeah. To even like see wondi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. rough. Yeah, yeah. There's something else you also said. You said ukoko had limiting money beliefs. Yeah. What are those examples that you picked up with the? So the things about look in my life uh, for certain people, you know, mm. because we had this uncle. I mean, the uncle. I mean, I got driver is that the guy. Yo. You know? And at that time, slightly Winterfeld. So Yo. those who know Winterfeld is like a plazi, right? <laughs> and now this guy, so Coco all the time would be like, in my life, you know, in my life for certain people, you know, as as he got rich. <laughs> Yeah, but, but and then this thing you guti imal impan your soul, and she would drum it on the basis guti. It, it's a sin to have mine. Mm. And you are young, and so then you take that, you absorb it. Now it also makes sense. Go to umalu mimageza. Now the guy comes with the Royce Royce, and for I don't know for what reason this guy will only bring watermelon. <laughs> and I'm like, but umalu is rich, my guy. You know, and he brings watermelon, and he eats. 
I cut, you know, <laughs> cut the watermelon and eat a big chunk of it. And then to me, it's like, oh, so Ukoko was right. Says, <laughs> when you are rich, you are evil. <laughs> you know? And, and when you don't see Yangusha, this thing, you grow up with it and it becomes an issue. <laughs> uh, so yeah. you are having an issue with Malume can bring more. Oh, or is like, it just coming? Why not? Uh, Rolls Royce and all you have is. I mean. Slala no koko, you also bring something yeah, like a fifteen yana niza tenga, you know, bread or something. But ah, this guy never. <laughs> like literally he will come whenever he comes. Out of the blue, he brings watermelon and he cuts a big chunk of it. So to me it makes sense. It's like okay, but actually these rich people are, are just evil. At what point did you realize that I've got limiting money beliefs and I need to do something about it? I think I mean I would say maybe 10 years ago, but where it became, like, when I said enough is enough was like four years ago. Mm. Yeah. Because remember, you'll you, you still wing it, but mm. it's not as effective as when somebody says, look, I love money. I'm comfortable with money. And I I'm want a lot of it. I want, yeah, a lot of it. And, you know, I, I, was, I, was, I was having a, a coaching session the other day. It's like, you know, the other problem that happens is, when you are in that space, you always run away from people that talk like that. Even from a relationship perspective, mm, I would always run away from strong women who says, mm. look, uh, I, I hate being broke. I hate poverty. And then mm. to you, it's, you know, it's like, it's it's like a shocker. It's attacking you. Yeah, right? it's like you are taking me, you know, and then I'll always stay away from them. It's like, ah, this thing, me too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> them. yeah, because I'm like thinking, no, they're going to challenge me. And they're going to take me out of my comfort zone, basically. So I'll always stay away. Mm. I'll never, I mean, I'm now having a mentor. Mm -hmm. And I imagine, I mean, I'm 43 December. <coughs> Only now I'm having a mentor. All your life you didn't? No. And people wanted to mentor me. But why? Because then accountability part. How do you mm. become accountable to a person when you, you, you have lim limiting beliefs? And accountable to people who want you to have a lot of money when you're uncomfortable thinking that far about yourself as exactly. well. Exactly, yeah. So how then do you become vulnerable to them? Because they're going to challenge you, remember. Mm. Yeah, and then whatever you say, you must deliver. And now you lack the self-trust. So how do you deliver on something that you're lacking on? You're not yourself. Mm, true. You know what, even, even with me... I think I got a mentor for the first time. I must have been born at 36, 35, thereabouts. And that's a while back. So I think it's because, it's not because I saw a need for me to get a mentor. Mm. I was so broke, I had no choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You Anyone know. who was coming with decent exactly. advice. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's hear it. <laughs> so I want to be in my guy. <laughs> You know, and they see that in you. There's a favorite question that we have for pastors. And yeah. because uh, you, you came talking <laughs> okay. sermons. Yeah. Yeah, we won't let you go. Okay. According to uh, Mr. Kev. Yes. Why are so many Christians broke? <laughs> All right. So I believe there's two parts to the coin. Right. Um, there's the technical and then there's the spiritual. Mm. element okay so i think a lot of the times in especially in churches we 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 preach the spiritual and mm. not the technical mm. that is why a lot of the times even using the word money it's a problem mm. right so i mean if you look at when it comes to um the giving part you know now it's the offering time yeah like go and look at churches a lot of the times when that it's you know it's mentioned Mm -hmm. Ish, it, it, even the mood goes down <laughs> <laughs> because we, we, we haven't been preaching the aspect of money in a very effective way. So it, it, it just like the same as the confidence aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. So if a lot of people hear the spiritual side, but you're not feeding them the technical, you're not saying this is how you budget. This is how you, you grow your, your share portfolio. This is mm -hmm. how you build a property investment portfolio. Then how do you then match this, the spiritual and the reality that people have on the ground? I love it. You're reminding me of a powerful lesson I had from one of my mentors. He said, 
he was speaking with some Jews mm. and they said you guys shouldn't even be talking tithing until you've taught budgeting first nice because you're good at telling people where the 10% should go yes and not telling them where the 90 what yes. should happen to the 90 <laughs> yes how do you grow that yeah yeah and because of that they can give the 10 percent, but because they don't know what to do with the 90 yes their lives remain in ruin exactly because you also take from leg you know i mm -hmm. mean the other day i i think it was yesterday actually we you know i took my mom to to a church wanted to visit the church and um when we were there i look at the offering and then you know those churches that they mentioned <laughs> the offering Oh, they yeah, say, like, this ah, is how much we, we collected, uh, like 3,000 uh, last week. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and then you check the cars that are parking. <laughs> there. But, but it makes sense. It's because we, there, there, there has never been value that is placed on the finances mm -hmm. than the spiritual. So the entire uh, service is all about the, the nourishing your, your spiritual base. But what happens now when you step out and you have to go home? Mm. And you have to face the reality that, you know, is there. There's no money. Oh, I have the money, but I don't know what to do with it. So if I'm getting you right, you're saying churches have a platform to help people develop the technical side of things on how to manage money and grow their well-being. Absolutely. But they're not using it as effectively. Absolutely. They're not Absolutely. using that platform yeah. effectively. Not. I mean, I like the part about the, the tithe, right? Mm. Is that tithing, you, you, you tell me that this I need to put out mm. and, and place it here. Mm. But what happens now to this? And remember <laughs> that if I'm not growing, right, mm. financially, there's also an issue because then people get into debt. So mm. if now you're also not going to help me to, to, to solve my financial issues, but then you still rely, you still want the 10%. Mm. Yes. So now I'm, I'm in debt, but I still need to give 10%. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work much? Do you know? One of the sermons mm. is exactly that. The debt trap. Yeah. Let's talk a bit to that. Yeah. What, what was the intention? What did you want to warn people? Um, yeah, so look, I mean, it, and, and funny enough, I, I do mention on that um, sermon how I got into debt. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, it was the first year of working. Okay. And at the time I was dating this girl. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so dating, I just got permanent. I don't know if it's still a thing, but <laughs> back in the days, you become permanent. We slaughter chickens. <laughs> like it's a part. You know, they call their neighbors like, hey, my mom was like, my child has just been made permanent at work, you know? <laughs> so, okay, well, yes, I think fine, you know, on this track, to it, okay, guy just made permanent, wonderful. And then, then she proposed to say, dude, um, I need a, a flat of my own. She was sharing at the time. Mm. So I need a flat of my own, Can but obviously I can't because of the work that I'm doing. Uh, I won't get, you know, I, obviously my application won't be favorable. Won't, uh -huh. You just be made permanent. You work for a bank, I mean, you are Even. good to go, you know. Mm. Can you please then take out this lease, you know, for me? <laughs> I'll pay for everything. <laughs> ah, me, I'm like, I'm like thinking, I stay at home with my mom, we just have this house, and I can have like a steady nyana mm. without paying for it. You know, that's yeah. how I thought. Mm. Yeah, and then now I signed a lease. I didn't even know about leases, what's happening there. <laughs> Only for her to pay the deposit one month's rent. After that, they start pay. They start calling me after the second month because she didn't pay. Mm. That's when then I was introduced to debt. You know, I started. <laughs> I was staff. I mean, I was working for the bank. I went to the staff banking. I mean, the first I remember that lady was like, "Okay, what what credit line do you want?" Okay. I'm like credit line. What's that? <laughs> I'm like, no, I really want money. Yeah. How yeah, much? How much? I'm like, how much? She's like, yeah, which one? I was like, anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and then this lady's like, okay, so we have an overdraft, we have a revolving loan, we have a, a lento, a credit card, we have a personal loan. Which one? I'm like, when what do you suggest? I'm like, mm. okay, let's start with the credit card. Did you not say which one is the highest? Uh, I didn't even <laughs> know about, about highest. You know, so it's yeah. like, okay, so a credit card. I'm like, okay, yeah. So at the time I was owing two months. Okay. So, I mean, and funny enough, my, 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 my take home was 4.4. 4. 
Mm-hmm. And then the rent was 3.5. Yo, okay. So already, Jay, that should have been <laughs> a red, a red flag. flag. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, so I'll, I owe 7,000. Okay, give me 7,000. It's like, but why don't we round it off to 10,000? <laughs> <laughs> so she gave me 10,000. I don't know what happened to the 3,000, <laughs> but <laughs> I paid back the seven. It's like after that, the lady's like, okay, thank you, Mr. Mkabel. I've paid for two months. But what about this month now? Remember, mm. you signed a 12 months lease. Mm. Only to check that she, she saw that I didn't know what was going on. So she's like, no, pay for three months and then we'll let you off the hook. Yo, and, and I then, went back. wait, when this hap- is happening, aren't you talking to a girlfriend and asking stand up? No, that time things are not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and funny enough, before the signing of the lease, I was promised the key. But Kevin was up in the, in the air, forgot about the key. So now when everything, all of this start to become messy, you don't have access. I don't have the access. So you are just paying? Yeah, I uh, literally paid. And remember now, that was dead, right? Because mm-hmm. now I went back for three months, now I must pay. So I paid, it was the first seven thou, now mm-hmm. it was the three months that I needed to pay. So all in all, now you, you are in, in deep. <laughs> And part of it was the overdraft. It was a revolving loan. But remember now, you're starting off from a back footing. Mm. And I'm not telling anybody at home. Uh, even my friends didn't know that I was going through all of this. Oh, so you moved into the overdraft and you took a loan? Yeah, so now I had, no, like I had all of them. So overdraft, credit card, uh, the revolving loan. And remember now, it's, it's it, I mean, I still have responsibilities. I had a bond. I had, you know, I, I had a car, the petrol. Uh, yeah. So then it, it builds up as you go. So I got into sales. You know, so that's when things started to change. Because then when I looked at my situation, it, it can't go out. It's, it's either I go to debt review. So which, this, your, your, by your admission, when you looked at your salary, you knew that this is not enough to get me out of this. It, it's not. Yeah, because at times you find that what's there, is, it should be there at the time. Like, mm. you know, or you go to debt review, which normally I don't suggest unless if there's assets involved. Okay. So if there's a house, there's a car, then at least, you know, when you go there, it can become an immunity. It can protect that. But if there's none of that, then I normally say that you see everything is there, then there needs to be ways now to either manage what you have. So, for example, um, I say it's better to pay to be a slow payer than a non-payer. Okay. So, at times, is that you, you can pay slow. So, instead of the 3000 pay 600 mm-hmm. But at least you are paying. So, there's a plan mm-hmm. there. But you'll find that a lot of the times, if you just stick to that, you, it's going to take you for the rest of your life right mm-hmm. so now look at ways now to supplement that income so what are the things that i can do you know that can then bring me more money mm-hmm. and then when that money comes in then you prioritize okay let me start with the li- little nana ones then you kill the smaller ones then the money that you are supposed to pay there then is diverted to the other ones right because at the end of the day you still need to live True. Yeah, so you can't just say, I just pay debt. Like, it doesn't make sense. Your, your mental health is going to be messed up. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so you still need to live, but it, it needs to be that plan. First of all, it's the management aspect and the growing part of it. Mm. Those two things need to go in hand in hand. I love it. So if someone is listening to you and saying, okay, I think I have started receiving those calls, mm. go for debt review. Yeah. How am I making that decision? You have to sit with somebody that can check it out. Mm. Yeah. And, 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 and that's why I'm saying that at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you are, it's not as bad as you think. I, a couple of times I've sat with people and like, dude, it's not as bad as you think. Okay. And then I can show somebody's like, actually, you have a surplus of 13,000 every month. Is it's it? Like, Where? Where does it? I mean, then we do it. I'm like, yeah. What, what would you have found? <laughs> It's the, the lack of structure. I would love you for you to find me an extra thirteen thousand. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the lack of structure. Yeah. Yeah, it's the lack of structure. And if now you, you, your, your finances are not structured, you know, and, and the budget does that, you know, you oh. have the income, you have your expenses. Mm. It's either then you have a surplus of your deficit, right? Mm. So the surplus, then you need to ask yourself, what happens to the surplus? 
So if now I have 5,000 left after mm. my fixed expenses has been paid, what happens to that 5K? Yeah, I like I like that print because basically it's saying with a budget, you start to see where the waste is. Exactly. And you can reorder yes. the way you're using your money. Yeah. It's like business. It's mm. cash flow, right? Yeah. So you need to know what's coming in, what's going out. Then you need to plan because within that, there needs to be savings. What happens if rainy days come, right? You have a mic that doesn't work. Mm. So if now you don't, you're not liquid, then you are stuck. Yeah. For that mind, <laughs> until you come up with it, the yeah. mind. But now if I have maybe a, a rainy day, an emergency fund, then if a mic break, breaks, then I have uh, 2000 to fix it. There's something actually when you're saying, you're reminding me of Umensa Opta. There is a pastor mm. in Ghana. Yeah. You're saying I sit in the board of banks. Yeah a particular bank, one of the largest there, and mm. he was saying, I don't, I sit with people that have these MPAs and these fancy degrees, and you know I'm a pastor. Yes. And I don't have the degrees that they have. Yeah. But sometimes we overcomplicate the subject of money. Mm. When I'm sitting there, I ask basic questions. Where is the money coming from? Mm. How are we using it? Yeah. How much is left? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Don't give me stuff, you know, because of the other things we say to look nice, to sound nice and all of that. Yeah. But it, it, it's a basic principles mm. that you need to follow, you know, and at times we miss it. And, and even us who preach this thing, at times we need to go back and say, hey, dude, actually, hey, <laughs> you need to go back. Yeah. So in, in terms of debt, you talked about emotional well-being. A lot of people that are going through debt struggle with that because it can be quite stressful. Mm. What advice do you have for someone going through that stress induced mm. by debt? I would say the first part is to, is to talk about it. To? I mean, it could be um, to a friend that you mm -hmm. can trust. It could be, um, I mean, we are very accessible, some of us, you know, um, a lot of people say, Kevin, do you charge? Like, to, to talking, we don't charge. Okay. You know, because we want to create that environment where we can understand where people are. Okay. Um, but I think now there's also a lot of, you know, I mean, social media has opened up a lot of things. Yeah, that's where, cool. Yeah, so even, even maybe if you don't talk physical to somebody, but maybe through chats, you can ask questions. You can get some response from that you know um and i know that even a lot of institutions now they offer free you know open lines where you can have discussions with people um and the content that you 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 also consume is also very important mm -hmm. because you know when you start to listening to positive things you're watching positive things that also helps you as well in terms of you know getting to that point where you realize that you are not alone basically. But mm -hmm. I would say the first part is to, is to have a discussion with somebody. Sometimes it's not even that that person will help you. You know, it's just me to say it like I'm in trouble. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to say much, but I'm, I'm in trouble. And, and then from that perspective, then at least you can start to understand, oh, all right, maybe I need to, to reach out to somebody that speaks about this. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, I, and a lot of the times we make this about my knee. But I, I feel that if you really need help and you reach out to people, they will help you, mm. you know. And, and the, the problem is that the stigma around finances is so bad, especially in, in the black community. Yeah. You know, um, so, for example, in the book, I talk about the qualifying syndrome. Mm. Yes, yeah, to say that just because you qualify doesn't mean, though it doesn't necessarily mean you can afford or just because they say you qualify. Yeah, just because they say you qualify. <laughs> um, and it's the same as the example that I gave earlier on. To yeah. say, I mean, I went to the bank and then the lady says, you, I wanted 7,000. Mm. And then she's like, but why don't you take 10,000 to round it off? Mm. You know, but I mean, I, I couldn't even afford the seven. <laughs> and I imagine <laughs> the 10,000, right? Which I don't even know what happens to that. So what am I looking at if I'm ch trying to check if I qualify or not? Yeah, so I mean, that will be on the basis, especially if you're going to go to a financial institution such mm -hmm. as a bank, right? Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll gravitate towards property because that's what that's I do good. the most. Yeah. So if you, there's what we call pre-approval. 
Mm-hmm. So a pre-approval can check, you can check you to say, okay, how much can I qualify for in mm-hmm. terms of property, right? Mm-hmm. Especially if it's going to be for investment purposes. So in, meaning that you're going to have a tenant, the tenant is going to pay you rent. Okay. Um, so on that basis already, because there's a tenant, so it's a business. Yeah. So meaning the tenant is going to pay you rent, right? Mm-hmm. So there's income that is coming from that. Mm-hmm. So that is good, right? Mm-hmm. But not necessarily all the time. So it means that you always need to know uh, the strategies around it. You know, are mm-hmm. you investing for cash flow? Are you investing for capital appreciation? Right. So there's a different element to that. Mm-hmm. But let me then touch on the cash flow. So you know, okay, before I even buy mm-hmm. that property, that I'm going to make two thousand profit, mm-hmm. because now there is a tenant that is going to be paying me four thousand. And then from there, I've written taxes of so much. And then after I've paid everything else, then there's a surplus that is coming from that side, mm-hmm. right? But now that property might be in a good area. Mm-hmm. So maybe in the next two years, that property increases in value. Mm-hmm. So initially, I bought that property for 300000 Now it's doubled to sitting at 600000 mm-hmm. So now meaning that I have equity of 300000 Extra, yeah. So I can go and refinance that amount. So I can go back to the bank mm-hmm. and say, bank, initially I went for 300000 but my property value has increased by another 300000 I want to borrow against that other 300000 mm-hmm. Then And they will do their own valuation. Question, yes, and then they'll do a, a affordability check. Mm-hmm. And then, then if I qualify, I get that 300000 cash. So what you're talking into is someone who knows how to use debt. Yeah. That's <laughs> now when you say... But remember, then it's, it's the coaching aspect of it as well. Yeah. So you might not necessarily know it, mm-hmm. but you might come and say, okay, Kevin, I need help. This is where I'm at. I'm, I can sit down with you and say, okay, based on your affordability, you are here, you can buy this and then this can give you that, can grow in value. Or mm-hmm. sometimes, I mean, you find that a person already has a property. Like, oh, Mamsara, there's Mamsara that I like using. Yeah. Yeah, Mamsara came to me and said, Mamsara, a couple of the three years back, say, Mam. Uh, Gavin, I'm sitting with the property. I saw one of your videos. You say people are sitting with uh, uh, properties with equity and they don't they don't know. No, I, yeah. yeah. And I actually, when we checked, Mam Sarah was a million, multi-millionaire. Okay. Because Mam Sarah had this house that's been paying for the longest of time. And she was left with a balance of 100000 Right? Mm-hmm. So then it's like, I hear this property investment thing, but I don't know how it works. Then with the consultation, with the pre-approval, we realize the property has increased in value and what she has paid over time, Umam Saga could actually borrow 1.5 million from the bank. Mm. So like, okay. Then from that 1.5, we bought three properties cash, <laughs> which had an income through refinancing. Okay. Yeah. And then, then we bought those properties in a company. So all of a sudden, Umam Saga had a company. That's giving, <laughs> that's, that's generating money. <laughs> Right, but one of the uh, children was about to get married. Community of property is like, hey, I don't trust these things. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> if I die now, this this girl all of a sudden, I was like, no, but put it in a trust. Then we put that the ownership of the properties in the trust so that we can safeguard that. And from a tax point of view, it becomes much more effective because when you buy in a company, then you know you pay twenty seven percent tax. But there's also ways to offset your expenses. True. Yeah. Because the tax is on profit. Yeah, profit, exactly. So yeah. all the expenses can be written yes. off, which yeah. makes it a lot better than buying as an individual. At times, yes. So that's why it's always very important to, to, to consult first if you don't know what to do. Because sometimes it's actually beneficial to buy in your personal name. Especially what would the a, difference be? What would have changed? So, for example, if you flip... Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't necessarily like flipping in a company. Buying a property, just upscale Below, it a bit and, and sell put it, it out there. Yes, mm-hmm. because then your capital, capital gains there, you know. Mm. Yeah, because you, you're going to offset that asset anyway. So it's not like you're going to keep it, right? So you're saying capital gains is more if you, if I use a company. An entity, yes, than you on your personal level. Also, it depends on the strategy. I didn't know capital gains was higher for a business. Yeah, that's why you always, yeah. That's uh, why we uh, need to, you. Yeah, <laughs> this, yeah, so it's not, so it, at times we, and that is why we always stress that talk to somebody that knows. Because 
it's not a one one size fits approach you know so you mm. always need to understand where you're going um sometimes for example uh, somebody will ask me but Kevin I like this structure thing you know the, mm. the trust okay I have a primary home right and then I'll ask this primary home okay do you think you're gonna sell it you know in the future mm. because maybe now you have a four, four bedroom house with the kids but the kids are gonna grow old and then they're gonna move out at some point now that four bedroom it will be too too much and maybe you and your madam wants to retire to the coast <laughs> You understand? <laughs> and that house at the coast, you need to su supplement it somehow. So you might need to sell this one to supplement that. Okay. Yeah. So you always need to understand exactly where you are. So that's why we always ask when we talk investment, what is your investment horizon? Mm. Yeah. So are you, are you getting in from a short-term perspective, medium-term, or long term. Oh, and that informs yeah. your strategy. Yeah. When you look at the example you gave, air trust and community of property when it comes to your marriage, what exactly does it protect a trust? Yeah. In that instance. Because I imagine if it's community of property, they even if the party dies, don't you still inherit a portion of whatever was coming from the trust? Not what either. does it protect? Yeah. So so maybe also to clarify, there's two main trust that we talk about mm -hmm. there's a testamentary trust and there's a inter vivos trust mm -hmm. so a testamentary trust is the one that it's more attached to your will so okay. it says that if i pass away because maybe i have kids mm -hmm. and they're still minors they don't know what to do with the money right so it will so i'll maybe nominate my my mother i will nominate my father whoever okay. so those guys will then be in charge of handling my financial affairs until, until the child is, is of age, okay. right? And then you have an inter vivos trust. The inter vivos trust is an entity on its own. So we have three main entities. It's you, Dano, you are an mm -hmm. entity. Yeah. You are a it is a private company. It's an entity. And then there is the trust, the inter vivos trust. So the beauty about the inter vivos trust is that it's totally independent of you. Okay. Meaning that, for example, in a company, you are the director and the shareholder. So your shareholding will still form part of your personal estate. Okay. Whereas in a trust, it's totally independent. So whatever that's owned by the trust, I ain't gaining the mm. you, you are not the trust. You control the trust. So now if I married in community of property, that shareholding in the trust doesn't form part of my personal estate. Because remember that the sharing happens in the personal estate. So if I die, what happens to my stake in the trust? And get there's beneficiaries in the oh, trust. Okay. So they just remove your name, you are gone, and then your beneficiaries then become trustees of the trust. How much do I need to be making to be able to set the trust? Can anyone just go to the, and say, guys? Any, yeah, anybody. Don't they look at your network and say, I, no. uh, they, you have nothing to protect <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, if you have nothing to protect, then it's a problem, right? But um, but there is there is no criteria to it. It's just that one should understand there is obviously financial implications for that, you know, to mm -hmm. set it up, and um, you know, there 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 might be monthly, um, you know, expenses to that, just okay. to make sure that the trust is compliant, you know. Okay. But what are we looking at? Rough, rough range. I mean, it can start from two, as little as two hundred rand a month. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, it just depends who you do it with. Are there disadvantages that people aren't aware of? I'm asking because mm. I'm surprised to why aren't many people mm. thinking about it. Yeah. Look, I mean, it's it's not a... It's, trust are normally associated with money and wealth and riches. Mm. So it's more of, you know, yo, it's for wealthy people. Like, it's crazy even when we talk about these things and then when somebody's like, but they're expensive. And I'm like, how much is expensive? <laughs> because that's relative. You know, 6000 to somebody, <laughs> yes, might be very expensive, but, you know. So, and it depends what you have to protect at the end of the day. Mm. But these are the conversations that normally we don't really talk about. You know, they, they're not out there because... Again, maybe it's the perception that, you know, certain <laughs> demographics, yeah, we, we, are, we don't have stuff this to is protect. For others. It's for others, you know. So it, it's not there. You know, that's why even when we talk about it, I mean, we did um, a drive this month 
for the Women's Month and we were going in, in townships and explaining these things. And I had Bokoko in my milord. It's like, ah. Huh? And you find enough, you sit there and Koko comes after uh, afterwards and says, I have three properties. <laughs> you know? I and need this protection. Yeah, I need this protection. <laughs> and normally you'd be like, ah, but isn't the township like Bokoko? Mm. I was shocked. You know? mm. And not, not really shocked, but it, it, yeah, there, there was that there, understanding. There's been some hard working yeah. Kokos out there. Yeah, and then Banama room, mm. right? And, and and partly part of it, the big part of it was that look, there is so much wealth in the townships mm-hmm. that we are not exploring. You know, we explore the business part, yes, open businesses, but we don't explore the asset element of it. I mean, mm-hmm. if you look at our back room, every single township now has back rooms. A lot of them, people, when you talk to them, they don't even know that it's a business. A mm-hmm. lot of them, they don't even know they can protect that to scale it. You know, so that is exactly the problem that we have. And part of the drive that we are doing with this township property road shows is to get in, like to the people. Not good, okay. we're going to do seminars. It's great, you know, but sit, no go. See, we were there. It's, some of the churches, there's, there's nothing, <laughs> but there's wealth there. You understand? Because people didn't know that there's so much to mm. learn. If someone is saying, I've got a permanent job and I want Eastside Hustle as property. Is it still viable or it's because a lot of people are going that route or that's the mm. perception in general? Yeah. It's not viable anymore. It is. Is there still an opportunity it for is. someone they'll, who's they'll in full time and they want it as a side hustle? Mm. No, there will forever be. Um, I actually, I, I love saturation. I mm-hmm. think like when markets are saturated, that's where there is a room for creativity okay you know because i mean even if you look at now that even with all this saturation there will be somebody that tweaks it and does something different you know it could be how you treat your your tenants it could be even the style of um i mean there's people that rent out shacks because there's a market for shacks there's people now that go to rural areas you know, because the rural areas are also coming up now. There's malls coming. Yeah. There's people that will do an Airbnb like in the middle of nowhere <laughs> because then the trucks, guys, they want to sleep. But they don't want something very expensive, you know. So it's all about strategy. It's all about to say in this world of people, you know, doing the same thing, how, mm. do, how do I become creative? Love it. There's another same one that you talk to. Uh, this one is a pain point for a lot of black people, our yeah. demography. And this is the black tax. Yes. You are someone on yes. black tax. Yeah. What's your take on it? Where are we? How should people handle this thing? Because th- I think the most painful version of it is where the family believes you are well mm. because the car they see, the house they see. Yeah. The family doesn't get to see how deep in debt you are. Yeah. And they maintain their expectation at a very high level yeah. and keep emotionally blackmailing you with real needs mm. to say, look at the need. It's real and we need your help. Yeah. But when you know you're in a situation and you sort of caught up in the love for the family, but this deep, deep, dark situation yeah. that you need to fix. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, look, there, there's, there's a, a number of layers there um, yeah. that I talk about that the first part is really being to educate our families. Um, I'll, I'll make an example. I, um, a couple of months back, we, we went to, um, I went to do a presentation um, with the intent doctors. Okay. Now, now obviously, intent doctors, especially if they come from the rural areas, like my child is a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an intent. <laughs> my, my child is a doctor. And there's an expectation that comes with that. Mm. And unfortunately, you now have these guys are a target. I mean, I remember when I spoke to a lot of them, they were driving proper cars. Like proper, maker, like yeah. Mercedes Benz yeah, and bro. all those kind of things, right? And top of the range. Because now they normally would be targeted by the, even graduation day. The, the guys will be there to say, go and test drive and all of that. So so now imagine now you're rocking up with this Mac or whatever car. 
and you don't want to be like umalumega gave yeah. bringing uh, a watermelon. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> And then, then it, there's element to that. I'm a close artist and stuff. Yeah. And then when you now get there, you, 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 you are faced with the reality that uh, the house is not in a proper sh- uh, shape, right? But remember, you are a doctor. <laughs> and people know you are a doctor. is a doctor. Mm. So Umama won't want like a, a okay functional house, right? Wants a proper house. So that's where the debt comes in. Now there's there's building loans, there's credit cards and all those kind of things. So so then the, the expectation is there, but they don't know your reality. They don't, mm. and they see what they see, and and for for the biggest part, a lot of the time is is they don't know. You mm. have painted this picture that you are okay, mm. because when when you look up there, you look up like you are good. Mm. They look at the clothes. They say, no, it's proper stuff. The clothes, the car. Yeah. So I'm telling them, oh, all right. The photos go Instagram. Yes. And then I'm telling them, oh, I'm telling them, oh, I'm telling them next door. And now you see next door, they are doing their things. <laughs> so then you are now forced to do that. So it's the education part that mm-hmm. starts. The second part is also looking at ways to then help the family being sustainable. Um, so I had a client that came from Limpopo and we had this discussion that's why actually I wrote the chapter yeah and he, he was crying he was like my guy I'm in, I'm in trouble eh? I'm in trouble I'm like okay and my brother still wanna work yeah what I'm like okay, but what what happens during the day what do they do mm. he's like ah hey nothing I'm like okay let's brainstorm a little bit what's needed in your township mm. or in your village right what do you think it's a need Okay. And brainstorm, brainstorm, realize that no man, actually that's hot. Yeah, well, so when it's hot, people need ice. I'm like, okay, so can't you now maybe look at buying, you know, a machine, an ice machine, mm. and start selling. I think they're always there at home. <laughs> so let them do something. Funny enough, he did it. And mm. they started, you know, uh, selling, selling ice. the, the ices. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, they're like, okay, hey, let's. Uh, teach them how to manage their mind, <laughs> right? And then the thing became a business, a proper business. And it's sustaining them. As a, yeah. So I'm not saying that it's going to work out like that all the time, but mm. I think there's also a need of discussion to say, but how do we become creative around it? You know, because sometimes you have a family of your own, mm. so you can't be taking money all the time, you know? So you always not to say, okay, guys, I mean, I need to, I want to help, but I also have owned my, my, I have my own kids, I have my own family. And it's mm. putting a strain at the end of the day because these things, they can also affect, they affect relationships. They even mm. break relationships and marriages. They can. Mm. Yeah. So it's now having that discussion to say, but how can we become creative around it? Because mm. maybe I have siblings that don't do anything, right? So how do we get them going so that at least they can start to become self sufficient? Do you think? confidence and self-esteem have a big role to play there where there are just some people who can't say no it's real because remember that it's it's also psychological right yeah. in terms of reverse psychology it's like oh, okay but it's fine Tanam. anyway it's all right we took you to school and this but it's all right <laughs> 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 and then how do you know you know content with that which is all right in Tanam. Uh, ah yeah. it's like ah, okay mama <laughs> I'm gonna give you this, and then oh, and then you have to go back to the media. I was like, hey, sh-. then then we are fighting, and then it's the stress. A lot of people are stressed, and and funny enough, I think that happens a lot with, with professionals because there's a high expectation there. Yeah, yeah, you are a CA, you are a doctor. Hey, can't you? Ah, uh, they don't know. You know, at times it's a, it's a you, title. You've got problems. Yeah, it's a title at, at the end of the day. So. It, it, you, you have to. And that is why I drill the aspect of mental health. I cannot stress it enough. I can't. It's Explain there. what you mean. Meaning that, you know, when we look at all of these, the mental part of it, for me, it's a critical component. Mm-hmm. And I see that whenever we talk things, they're more technical. We, we talk technical, but we don't talk mindset. We don't talk mm-hmm. the mind. And, and things like how we were raised. Um traumas that we go through mm. you know all these things they play a role i mean if i ask what is your relationship with money a lot of people can't answer that mm. uh, it for for a lot of us it's toxic it is yeah we are scared of man you know <laughs> <laughs> you are scared so 
how do you even grow money how do you even have these kind of discussions of you know saying no to people mm. i mean if people like abo oprah were struggling to say no when i buy yeah but <laughs> <laughs> so it 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 all boils down to the mindset mm. those things for mm. me are very critical and 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 the sad part is that mental health is still a, a taboo in in our communities like i mean you see even when you post about mental health like ah, what are you talking like, about even your, you know, like there's no response and and all of that <laughs> stuff like what like now you think we are mad mm. you know i mean i remember when i started talking about my problem with low self esteem i had one of my aunts call me and say hey guy hey, you must stop this thing <laughs> you know you now you're t- showing people your weakness yeah you know? i'm mean, but it's not weakness ah it even going to therapy because i mentioned it that i was going to therapy it's like yeah i know now you are slambalas as a family you know because we don't we, to ask these things uh, no you can't talk about them funny thing you say the which is because of the relationship we have with money that's not correct a lot of people are afraid of a lot of money yeah the combination there afraid of a lot of money but not afraid of debt yes yeah some some even have triggers <laughs> I and mean, I had somebody who had a trigger to say when I get to 50k yeah I sell like I I I chow it mm. because my mind doesn't see beyond 50k and it's real like the people even like there's somebody that has been in the same salary for the past 10 years not necessarily that they can, they can't scale that salary but but they believe that's what they are worth subconsciously mm, and it created the kind of comfort that stops them trying yes. to get yeah. more and it's a trigger because whenever they it's like even when you 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 say to them I'll give you 45,000 like ah why <laughs> <laughs> why 45,000 it's like the job is going to give i uh, know uh, and then they'll stay where they are because the mind it it's it, it's a trigger mm. you know immediately when you now hit above that there's something wrong like your your brain is not familiar with that we started off with someone i'll ask you to keep it off yes with the same one yeah to someone who doesn't believe they are worth a lot of money mm. they have heard enough times that christians need to be content mm. and so now they are stuck on the salary what's your word to them well what i can say is that <laughs> change the people that you surround yourself <laughs> with you know hey anyway, that's very key okay. so uh, basically start to i would say network up if if it makes sense um because a lot of the things also that we go through that we believe in they they influence by our environments so if you are still in the same environment that limits you, you you're not going to grow so start mixing with people that are doing great things it's going to be painful at first um you know when you sit with somebody that tells you that ah, do they make a million in a second and then, then you're going to have a problem you know but once you get used to it you like like stay the course like you're going to feel uncomfortable it's like standard 6 going to high school yeah that first year standard 6 is a problem you are now playing with the big big boys but do that stay the course and once you now become comfortable you re- you realize that it actually is doable you know it all it, it's all about exposure at the end of the day so expose yourself <laughs> to different uh environment that challenges you up you wonderful yeah. wonderful you heard from the man himself ain't nothing but the financial truth like i said and promised we'll put a link for you to find him if someone is curious about your consulting yes can they reach out to you yeah no of course so, we're on our agency as well yeah they can the same we link that we're going to use yeah they can they can then be able to to contact us we do have free consultations that we do mm-hmm. yeah so that that is primarily on the basis that we want to help he talks about property he talks about generational wealth he talks about a lot of some of the things that we talked about here so he is one man you can follow give thank you so much thank you so for much sharing for sharing part 1 <laughs> 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 thank you this so much this is part one yeah. so you you have made me interested more and more in my trust because mm. we do have an episode coming with a financial advisor and a lawyer on trust so i wanted mm. to get to understand it more but you've mm. really sparked curiosity and so now i'm yeah. super super interested to no, do that man. yeah but the next time we're calling you 
Let me warn you. We, we're giving you a board. Oh, ah, me, I like writing. Babe. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you see. That. <laughs> <laughs> I like writing. <laughs> He's coming back. We'll give him a board. So some of the lessons mm. that we'll put on a board. So he really breaks it down nicely. This was you to, for you to get to meet the man. Thank you for hanging with us till this time. And from our side, thank you again for helping the channel grow. We are only this far because of you. See you on the next episode.